Thanks TEDx for this opportunity. Today, we are going to discuss about creating a perfect fluid in laboratory. Let me start with our planet Earth. It's perhaps the only habitable planet which is known in our universe. It has a diameter of 12,742 kilometers. It's the third planet in our solar system. The solar system itself is very huge. It has a span of 150 million kilometers. Our solar system is part of a galaxy called as the Milky Way. Typically, a galaxy has trillions of stars, such as our sun. Millions of such galaxies come together to form the visible universe. The diameter of a visible universe is a staggering 10 to the power 26 meters. Our universe is very big. We want to know what are the building blocks, the basic fundamental unit that make up this visible universe. Dalton said, it's the atoms. The word atom means something which cannot be further subdivided. Due to pioneering work done by scientists Thomson, Rutherford, and Anderson, we came to know atom is made up of still smaller unique particles, electrons, protons, and neutrons. Scientists started bombarding protons with highly energetic electrons and figured out that the proton itself is made up of still smaller particles, the quark and glow. So what are the building blocks of our universe? All that you see, they are mostly electrons, quarks, and glow. Now it's a strange thing that the current universe, we do not have free quark and gluons. Then how do we study its properties? I'll try to tell you why we need a free state of quark and gluons to study its property by giving you an example of water. All of you know that water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Suppose I give you water and ask you, infer about properties of hydrogen and oxygen. It's difficult because hydrogen is a fuel. It burns. Oxygen supports burning. Water extinguishes fire. So you really need to create systems free to study its properties. So we need a free system of quark and gluons to study its properties. But the question is, it's not free in the current universe. Were they ever free? Well, yes, the universe evolved into its current form, taking 13.8 billion years. However, when it was a microsecond old, the temperatures were 10 to the power 12 Kelvin. The building blocks of visible matter, electrons, quarks, and gluons were free. So the next step is, can we recreate the conditions of a microsecond old universe in the laboratory? Then we can study its properties. Scientists figured out that's possible. If you smash ions, heavy ions, that is atoms, stripped off all its electrons at very high speed, speeds close to speed of light, then you can deposit a huge amount of energy in a small region. That will lead to rising temperature of 10 to the power 12 Kelvin. Matter will melt into its fundamental constituents, the quark and gluons, and you can study its property. One such facility is the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider at Brookhaven National Laboratory in the United States. The other bigger facility is the Large Hadron Collider, which is at CERN in Geneva in Switzerland. What, they, what do they do? They smash ions, they smash protons to melt matter in its fundamental units to study its properties. Just to tell you how how large a speed these protons go in this accelerator, 
by the way, this is a 27 kilometer circumference. It's a technological marvel, the world's largest particle accelerator. A proton covers this 27 kilometers 11,000 times in one second. That's the speed with which we smash the ions and the protons. The matter that you create stays for a very short time. The matter that you create is very minute. They are femtoscales, 10 to the power minus 15. The challenge is how do I detect this matter? How do I study its properties in laboratory? Ironically, to do that, you have to build meter scale detectors. Here is the solenoidal tracker at Wick. You can see the complexity involved in making these detectors. A larger version is the Alice detector at CERN. Just to compare, here is a person standing and making some measurements and you can see the scale of the detectors. And these detectors detected matter whose temperatures are 10 to the power 12 Kelvin, million times hotter than the core of the sun. Just to give you a perspective of this temperature, let me tell you that the world's lowest recorded temperature is somewhere between 10 to the power minus 10 to 10 to the power minus 6 Kelvin. The temperature of our universe is 2.7 Kelvin, measured from cosmic microwave background radiation. The temperature in this room is of the order of 300 Kelvin. The temperature in the surface of the sun is 6000 Kelvin and the core of the sun is million Kelvin. You can reach temperatures of the order of 10 to the power 9 Kelvin by a thermonuclear explosion. The temperatures that we reach in our laboratory is a staggering 10 to the power 12 Kelvin through the collisions of the two nucleus. These are the highest recorded temperatures in the laboratory. Okay, and then what do we do? Now that we have recreated, now that we have recreated a microsecond old universe in the laboratory, and we have reached the conditions which are favorable to study the properties of quark and gluons, we go forward and measure it. One of the property that I will discuss today is viscosity. What is viscosity? Viscosity of quark and gluons is what we are going to measure. So what is viscosity? Well, viscosity is just resistance to flow. Let's take water and honey. Water flows more smoothly than honey. That is because water has less viscosity compared to honey. Scientists usually define a quantity called as kinematic viscosity. Viscosity divided by the density of the fluid and try to compare that across all fluids. The natural principle says the kinematic viscosity of any fluid that you know has a lower bound. It cannot be smaller than a number one over four pi. Just to give you an idea how viscous the fluids can be, here is an experiment which is going on since 1927. The funnel here contains pitch, which is a material which is used to make the roads. And the beaker here collects the drops that fall. 87 years has passed and only eight drops have fallen into the beaker. That's a highly viscous fluid. And its viscosity is 230 billion times of that of water. Our question is, what is the viscosity of the matter which each one of us is made up of? the fundamental constituents of any visible matter. Here is our experimental results. This is the data which we took of flow of quark and gluons as a function of momentum of the particles produced. We contrast it to calculations with varying kinematic viscosity. For example, let me take the kinematic viscosity to be zero. This is the flow one would have expected. Now I gradually dial up the kinematic viscosity to 1 by 4 pi. This is what I expect. Of course, viscosity reduces flow. You go on dialing up the kinematic viscosity 
in the calculations and you find the flow reduces smaller and smaller. What do you notice? You notice that the matter which each one of us is made up of has a viscosity which is very close to this 1 over 4 pi. You compare it to across any known fluids in nature and it turns out to be the smallest value at these temperatures. We have created a perfect fluid in laboratory. So what did our experiments do? Our experiments recreated the conditions of a microsecond old universe. In doing that, we took it to temperatures of the order of 10 to the power 12 Kelvin. Matter melted into its fundamental units and we measured its kinematic viscosity and found is the lowest compared to any known fluid in nature. Is that all? What's the rest of the fun? Well, our experiments stand on three pillars, computing, detector, and accelerator. Each of them is state of the art in its field. In each case, hundreds of physicists, engineers, scientists come together to build it. When so many great minds come together, of course it will have applications which will be useful in society. Let's take, for example, computing. The information that comes out of our experiment is huge. To process that data, we had to connect all the computers across the world through a grid, just like an electrical grid. The information has to be shared with people working on it. The information has to be exchanged with physicists, scientists. That's how the World Wide Web was born at CERN. It was in 1989 due to need for information exchange and sharing, the WWW was born. Soon, Sun realized its importance, and in 1993, it placed the web in public domain, free, donating it. Now, few other technological advances in the history have more profoundly affected the global economy or the nature by which we interact than the web. How about the detectors? The detectors that we use detect the mindless of the particles known in nature. They detect the fastest of moving particles in nature. Of course, they will have fantastic position resolution. They will have great time resolution. They will have fantastic energy resolution. And hence, they can be used to image our body. These detectors can be used for medical imaging. They are soon replacing the two-dimensional black and white x-rays with the three-dimensional colored images of organs and tissues. It's a boon to medical diagnosis. Let's take the case of accelerators. Remember, these accelerators like LHC moves protons over 27 kilometer and manages to collide it. That's the precision. That's the precision with which we work. These accelerators and hence are used in our field. These accelerators are used in our field to, uh, we use in our field are used in medical sciences for radiotherapy, for treatment of cancers. They can precisely reach the disease organ and cure it. While passing through the body, it least affects the good tissues and cells. So let me try to tell you what our experiment led to in terms of the societal applications. Our quest to know more about nature leads to building things that are forefront and cutting edge in technology. It is this technology which has widespread applications. If you ask me, what else do I learn? Well, my collaboration is a collaboration of 2,000 people across 50 countries with about 200 institutes. What do I learn? I learn to share. I learn to collaborate. I learn to respect others' opinion. I learn how to convince people of our own ideal. I learn to have patience. I learn different cultures and share mine. That is what we get. These experiments have inclusivity, diversity, and strive for equity already enshrined within the basic principles of the way we function. So is that all? 
Is that all that we know? Well, let me take you to how the universe evolved to the current stage and tell you what is there for young minds to do. This is the evolution of the universe. And I worked in an experiment where the universe is a microsecond old. If you want to know how the universe was few minutes after it's formed, join the FAIR experiment. If you want to know how the universe was when stars got formed, join the square kilometer array experiments. If you want to know how the structure of this early universe happened, 500 million year universe, then join the 30 meter telescope approach. If you want to know how sun gets its energy through fusion process, join ITER. If you want to know about black holes, neutron stars, and gravitational waves, a billion year old universe, join the LIGO. These fields are open. Come join these mega science experiments to know more about universe and nature. Thank you very much.